Looking for the perfect foundation for Big Boost? Then you'll want to consider GM's Gen 3 LQ4 and LQ9 iron block engines. In this guide, we'll provide a roadmap for getting more performance from your GM LQ4 or LQ9. The LQ4 started off life like any normal truck engine. Iron heads, small cam, and the old small block Chevy crank rear flange thing. That changed in 2001 when GM threw in the bigger cam and aluminum heads designed for the LQ9. The LQ9 was introduced in 2002 for the Cadillac Escalade and was found in top of the line trucks until 2007. It cranked out 345 horsepower, had 10 to one compression, and had other nice features like full floating pistons. Because of their strength, these engines are already great candidates for power adder applications. And they remain some of the most popular LS engines for several reasons. Their iron block strength makes them great for boost or nitrous applications. GM made a bazillion of them, which helps keep prices down. Like all Gen 3 engines, they didn't come with AFM or VVT, so you don't have the expense of an AFM or VVT delete kit. The heads flow similarly to LS6 heads, but have bigger chambers making them boost friendly. And finally, they offer a generous 364 cubes of displacement. Now, if they have one downside, it's weight. At 216 pounds, the block is 100 pounds heavier than the aluminum LS1 block. Our upgrades start with basic bolt-ons. For a lot of people, it starts off with a cold air intake and aftermarket exhaust. The problem is the engine starts to really sound good and owners find themselves wanting to go faster. Trucks often come with mechanical fans that sap horsepower. An electric fan kit will free up the power. At this point, we recommend you talk to your chassis dyno tuner and decide on a computer programmer. A tuner can dial the ECM and take it to the next level. It also makes it easier to tune for a bigger cam and injectors later on. Before you go, make sure to install a colder thermostat to open up the tuning window. Once you've added your bolt-ons, where should you go next? Let's examine opportunities for cam and valve train improvements. Regardless of whether you add a power adder, the original camshaft is small and should be jettisoned immediately. An LS3 or LS9 cam makes good power, but not where you want. So we recommend a dedicated truck cam. To maximize torque in the mid-range, manufacturers close the intake valve at about 40 degrees at 50 thousandths inch after bottom dead center and after the intake valve opening to set the idle quality. The bigger the engine, the smoother it will idle for any given cam, which is why you'll see the 6 liter LQ4 and LQ9 engines getting slightly bigger cams in the 5.3 liter engine. Drop-in 500-inch lift cams are popular, but LS6 springs allow you to run 550-inch lift kits and extend the RPM range. Spring life isn't a problem because trucks generally don't spend a lot of time at high RPM. Beyond that, 575 to 600-inch lift isn't a problem with dual valve springs. The stock rockers are good to 175 pounds of seat pressure and 450 pounds open. You want to install a trunnion kit for added reliability. There are a few other parts needed for an LQ4 or LQ9 cam swap, such as an LS2 timing chain, LS7 spec lifters, LS2 timing chain damper adapter, and 80,000 cents wall push rods. Now let's look at the big guns, power adders. Before we get too far, there are a couple things to address. A four corner steam kit reduces hot spots that cause the rings to button snap the pistons ring lands. Any power will put you well past the limitations of the stock injectors and pump. We'll address those in the next section. With that out of the way, let's start with your supercharger options. A root style supercharger is dependable and makes great torque in the low end and mid RPM range. On the other hand, the centrifugal style supercharger is lightweight and makes more power at high RPM. How about nitrous? A nitrous oxide kit at low settings is great for street driving with stock internals. Up to a 200 shot is common. Keep in mind the tight piston ring gap is the limiting factor beyond that. If you're wanting to get serious, a single plant intake is less prone to break from a nitrous backfire. A plate system has better distribution than the original intake, but an eight nozzle fogger system is even better. Running higher octane fuel is advised. Last, but certainly not least, let's take a look at what a turbo can bring to the party. Single turbo systems using turbo exhaust manifolds are an inexpensive way to make big power. If you're running a single turbo, the T4 hot side fits well, but the small turbine diameters limit exhaust flow. The 650 horsepower at the wheels begins to feel like 400 did in a hurry, so take this into consideration. V-band style exhaust housings open up the turbine options and make plumbing easier. Although twins are a little more expensive out of the box, you'll have more room to grow. Fuel system upgrades and tuning can also unlock more power from your LQ4 or LQ9, especially when going beyond the simple bolt-ons. 
The factory injectors are only rated at 25 pounds and won't support much more than 350 horsepower. If you plan on upgrading to larger fuel injectors to meet the fuel demands of increased horsepower, custom tuning will be required to properly adjust the fuel and ignition timing. Keep in mind the best injectors are fully characterized, which helps your tuner maximize idle quality. The factory pump is good to about 430 horsepower. Drop-in fuel pump modules and external pumps are popular. Other options to maintain or increase pump pressure include electronic voltage controllers and hot wire kits. Now let's take a look at options for aftermarket intakes and throttle bodies. If you've added a power adder, the intake and throttle body can take a back seat for a while. If you're naturally aspirated though, these upgrades are commonly done before the heads. The factory truck style manifold has long runners for better low end torque. Porting the intake is one option and a good value. If you're looking for more power and torque, the Trailblazer SS intake is a step up and a larger 90mm 4-bolt throttle body can be fitted. The fast intake allows bigger 102mm plus throttle bodies. Ask your tuner about going with a speed density tune. Doing so removes the math restriction and will give you a bit more power. Once you've upgraded the intake and throttle body, you can begin thinking about the heads. And you've got a few options. The stock heads can be CNC ported for more airflow and milled up to 30 thousandths inches for more compression. Flow numbers can be as high as 325 CFM and 600 inches of lift. Lightweight hollow LS3 valves can be cut to 2 inches to fit the seats. Between the light valves and better springs, the engine will pull cleanly to 7,000 RPM. Although LS3 heads fit, the valves are shrouded and the increase in power isn't what the flow numbers would suggest. You would also need a rectangle port truck intake to retain the torque and clear the accessory drive. A better option is aftermarket cathedral port heads. They reduce downtime, they're all new, and you can usually offset the added cost by selling your original heads. Valve angles are typically laid over to 13.5 degrees, and 2.1 inch intake valves are common. They flow great, and cross sections are great for boost. With a medium sized cam, 450 plus naturally aspirated horsepower is common even with heavier truck drive trains. Still looking for more? Then look more closely at your rotating assembly. The pistons are a weak point in stock form. A set of forged pistons should be high on your priority list. They have stronger wrist pins, thicker ring lands, and the added valve reliefs allow you to run bigger cams. There are exceptions, but Gen 3 rods start getting dicey around 750 horsepower, and the bolts don't like much more than 7,000 RPM. If you're getting forged pistons, it's best to also get forged connecting rods with 7 16 rod bolts. The LQ4 and LQ9 cranks were cast but strong and been known to handle over a thousand horsepower. The main reason for going with a stroke or forged crank is for added cubic inches. The extra cubic inches bring boost on quicker, which means you can use bigger turbos. Performance rotating assemblies are available in many configurations, but it's best to confirm exact deck height before ordering. Finally, how about the block itself? There is no replacement for displacement. The cylinders can be safely overboard 30 thousandths inches. When combined with a four inch stroke, this will increase displacement to 408 cubic inches or 6.7 liters. The blocks have been known to withstand 1300 horsepower with proper machining, racing fuel, and an excellent tune. Head and main studs are advised if you're making more than 850 horsepower. The factory main caps aren't dowled. It's better to reduce ignition timing and compensate with added boost to reduce the cylinder pressure spikes that lift heads and cause the main caps to dance. That's your path to upgrading the GMLS LQ4 and LQ9 engines, from the simple to the more complex to the downright wild. Enjoy the journey and those performance improvements too.